Judges 21. Now, this is a continuation from chapter 18, 19, 20, and 21. There's been a war over a bunch of sodomites that Benjamin didn't want to turn over. And Benjamin was defeated. Now, the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. Well, they were not to, to cross the tracks. Benjamin and Rites were to marry the Benjaminites. Now, this was one city. One civil war. Did this war kill all the Benjaminite women? All of them? There's no commandment of God. And the people came to the house of God and bowed there to even before God and lifted up their voices and wept sore. They're weeping for Benjamin. It was their own sin. The wages of sin is death. They caused their own evil. And said, O Lord God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? Sin. The sin of sodomy specifically. One man came to sojourn in the house and the people of the city came around and they wanted to violate the man. And in chapter 20, Israel gathered together as, as a unit, as one, and came to Benjamin and said, Bring us those men of Belial. And Benjamin said, No, we're going to protect them. And he had over 40,000 men killed. Over. In abundance. And it came to pass on the morrow that they that the people rose early and built there an altar. Well, it says they bowed there at the house of God, but they built an altar. Where's the brazen altar? Why are they building an altar? And offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Where's the sin offering? They're doing everything they're supposed to, but again, they're not doing all that they're supposed to. And the children of Israel said, Who is there among all the tribes of Israel? And verse 4, they, they do their offerings. There's no answer by God. And the children of Israel continue to speak. And the children of Israel say, God didn't say nothing. Who is there among all the tribes of Israel that came not up with the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that came not up to the Lord to Mizpah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. Man, they're laying all these oaths on them, and the one thing the Bible does tell them is you're not to put those oaths. They are hanging themselves with their own words. If God wanted Benjamin to survive, he would have still had Benjaminite women in the tribe of Benjamin. And to have them go into other tribes, that's a violation of the law. As much as go out outlandish women that we read in uh, uh, Nehemiah. The children of Israel repented them for Benjamin, their brother. Why isn't Benjamin repenting? He's the one that did the sin. He's the one that would not turn over those men, those sinners, those wicked men. And said, there is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. Sin. would have been a lesson. How shall we do for wives for them that remain? See, we have sworn by the Lord... I, I guess you guys called the question, are there Benjaminite women? Are they taking things out of hand? See, we have sworn by the Lord that we will not that we will not give them of our daughters to wives, and that was a violation. You couldn't cross the tribes. 
And this has happened over a bunch of men who don't want women in the first place. They rather had their their game with the men. Now handed the the wife of the Levite. They had her. They had their way with her. Okay. But their first choice was to have the man. And they said, "What one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mizpah to the Lord?" And behold, there came none to the camp from Jabesh Gilead to the assembly. So here's one group of people that didn't come. For the people were numbered, and behold, they were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead. So let's see 1 Samuel 31.11. 1 Samuel 31, verse 11. This is after Saul has died. And when the inhabitants of Jabeth Gilead heard of that which the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men rose and went to went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of their sons from the wall of Bethshin and came to Jabesh and burnt them there. And they took the bones and buried them under a tree at Jabez and fasted seven days. So these are the men, here are men from Jabez Gilead. After Paul, after uh, Saul was killed, him and his sons were hanged on the walls of Dagon. They went through the holes of the Philistines and grabbed the bodies and returned them back to Israel to give them a proper burial. So these are no weaklings. If they can go to the Philistine hopes. And I guarantee King Saul and his sons were a great prize. You're just not going to just walk up to it and grab it. Verse 9, the judges. For the people were numbered, and behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabeth Gilead there. And the congregation sent to their 12,000 men of the Valentists. That's the elite of the elite, and commanded them, say, Go and smite the inhabitants of Jabeth Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the children. Now you're going to go kill your own brethren? You're going to commit murder? Isn't this gotten out of hand? And we all started this. It starts in 1922. Chapter 1922, not the year. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beseeched the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, and they said, that we may know them. And it's not how to do. You guys, what happened in the last time in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring city? Well, God, he destroyed them all, and there's not yet a city to be built there. And really, three people came out, but four people came out of Sodom. One turned to a pillar of salt on the way. They're going to kill their own brethren. And this is the thing that ye shall do. Ye shall utterly destroy every male, every woman that has lain by man. So you're looking for virgins. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabez Gilead 400 young virgins that had not known no man. Oh, there's a Bible definition of virgin. By laying with any man. So out of the entire city, all they could find was 400, and they killed the whole city. Except 400. Their own brethren. Why? Because they didn't show up to Mizpah. That is... You tell me what book of Moses that's in over here in the law? It's messed up. And they brought them unto the camp of Shiloh, which is in the land of Cana. And remember, Jerusalem's not set up yet. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin. 
And go back to 20, verse 47. Chapter 20, verse 47. But 600 men turned and fled to the wilderness. So there is at least 600 men that are alive. Back to verse 13. That were at the rock rimmer and to call peacefully unto them. And the Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives which they had saved alive of the women of Javeth Gilead, and let and yet so they sufficed them not. So there's six hundred men, four hundred women. We're gonna do that to, uh, two hundred men don't get wives at least. Because you wanted to harbor a criminal. You could have just turn them over. And 25,000 Benjamites did not have to die in chapter 20, verse 35. The Benjamites did least. It's like the United States bombing Hiroshima and then going over and repairing. Yeah. So, verse 15. And the people repented them for Benjamin. Again, Benjamin sinned. Don't you dare repent for someone else's sins. Now what? Here's the repenting. Because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Where did God come in on this? Are you telling me that men of Belial attacked a man's house? He chops up his wife in 12 pieces. Okay. He reports to Israel that a crime has happened. Israel gets, gets together. Only one man of three or four witnesses shows up to the trial. And unity, we go to Benjamin and say, Benjamin, bring those men that committed the crime to us that we may put them to death. Benjamin says, oh, no, 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 no. No, we're not turning them over. We'd rather kill you than put those sinners into the hands of, of justice. So there's a whole civil war in chapter 20. Chapter 21, they're opening up their mouths to vows which don't even need to be made. And then in chapter 15, it's God's fault. Let's look at the last verse again in this chapter to close this book. Verse 25. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. If that is not the description of chapter 21. They are playing by their own game. They do not have the book of Moses. I mean they've got it. They're not using it. And they just murdered a whole city. Now I don't think all Benjamin was, was destroyed. I don't know. So they blamed God in 15, verse 16. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for the wives for them that remain? 200. Seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin. I don't. I don't think all the women are destroyed. I don't know. I'm kind of believing these people with their actions. but And they said, there must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. How be it? We may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Well, maybe if you didn't do that, it's only going to get worse. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh. A feast of the Lord. This is a feast for Jehovah. Yearly in a place where there, where which is on the north side of Bethel. In the land. On the east side of the highway that goes up from Bethel to Shechem. And on the south, uh, Laboran. Laboran. So here's a feast unto the Lord. Now you think, oh right, great. What are we going to do? Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards. This is 
not looking good. And see and behold if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances. Then come ye out every man, I mean, then come, yeah, come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. Oh, so what you do is if these girls come out, go catch them. Go man steal these these daughters. That's great advice. Let's go steal the girls. You want to show me where that is in the law? And it shall be when their fathers or or their brethren come unto us to complain. That's the first time complain shows up in the Bible. And that dance, not dances, but dances the first time shows up in the Bible. So when the fathers, the brothers come out and say, hey, what did these guys do to our daughters? Then we will say unto them, be favorable unto them for our sake. Because we reserved not to each man his wife in the war. For ye did not give unto them at this time that ye should be guilty. You see, we had this big war. We opened for a big fat mouth stupidly to the Lord. And you're the guilty ones. So we're going to allow them, the violators of the law, we're going to allow them to go ahead and steal your daughters and you're to have favorableness toward us. Hey, it's That's the, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which frightened their own eyes. Situation ethics. And the children of Benjamin did so and took them wives according to their number of them that danced. The first time that showed up. Danced. Whom they caught and they went. Now this is the dances that Miriam had at the victory of the Lord of the Red Sea. Now here's a dance to the Lord, I guarantee be females with females, not mixed multitudes. And here a feast to the Lord. One tribe is ordered to go man steal the wife. Whom they caught and they went and returned unto their inheritance, their land, and repaired the cities and dwelt in them. And the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe, to his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. Everyone goes back home. And to close the chapter off, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in their own eyes. And that's the only way you can explain chapter 21. That's the only way.